that spend not your wealth on vanities and do not use it as a bait for judges in order you may eat somebody else's property. That means do not use your wealth to bribe the people so that you may eat up other people's wealth. Islam doesn't agree in eating up your brother's wealth. And the glorious Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you believe, innam al khamru al maisuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal ansabu al azlamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rishtum min amali shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. First anibullah lakum tuflihun, abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. The glorious Quran says that abstain from having intoxicants, alcohol, drugs, from gambling, from dedication of stones, divination of arrows, all these are Satan's handiwork. And we know that intoxicants is one of the root cause for various evils in the society. It prevents the universal brotherhood from prevailing. And according to statistics, it tells us that in America, on average, every day, more than 1,900 cases of rape take place. And in most of the cases, either the victim or the rapist is intoxicated. The studies of America tell us that there is 8% of incest in America. That means every 12th or 13th person you come across in America, he has committed incest. That is, having sexual relationship with close relatives father and daughter, son and mother, brother and sister. And majority, almost all the cases, it's under the state of intoxication. AIDS is spreading in the world. One of the reasons is intoxicants. Therefore, the Quran says, intoxicants and gambling, it's a Satan's handiwork. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. If you abstain from these evil things, universal brotherhood will be helped in prevailing throughout the universe. The glorious Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 32, nor come close to adultery, for it is a shameful deed. It's an evil opening other roads to evil. Islam is against adultery. The glorious Quran says in Surah Hujurat, chapter 49, verse number 11 and 12, that Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O oh, you believe, let not some men among you laugh at the others. You may never know that the latter may be better than the former. Let not some women among you laugh at the other. You may never know that the latter may be better than the former. Do not defame one another, nor be sarcastic, or call each other with nicknames. Avoid suspicion. For in many cases, Suspicion is a sin. Do not spy on one another. Do not backbite. Do not speak ill of one another behind the backs. Are you ready to eat the dead meat of your brother? The Quran says that if you backbite, if you slander anyone behind the back, it is as though you are eating the meat of your dead brother. And eating the meat of your dead brother is a double sin. Eating dead meat itself is prohibited. Eating meat of your dead brother is double crime. Even the cannibals who eat human beings, they do not eat the flesh of their brother. So if you backbite, if you speak ill about somebody else behind the back, it is a double crime. It is eating the meat of your dead brother. And the Quran gives the answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nay, you would abhor it. No one would ever like it. The Quran says in Surah Humza, chapter 104, verse number one, Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiter. All these laws of moral conduct, given the glorious Quran and Sahih Hadith, they promote universal brotherhood. Besides talking about universal brotherhood, the uniqueness about Islam is that it practically demonstrates the universal brotherhood. 
the Muslims are supposed to demonstrate the universal brotherhood five times a day in the Salah. When we offer Salah, we practically demonstrate the universal brotherhood. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Adan, chapter number 75, hadith number 692, that Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that when we stood for Salah, the shoulder of the companions touched with the shoulder of the companion. Our feet touched with the feet of a companion. The beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sunnah Abu Dawood, volume number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number 245, hadith number 666, our beloved Prophet said, before starting the Salah, that straighten your rows, stand shoulder to shoulder, and do not leave any gap or opening for the devil. The Prophet said, stand close to each other during Salah and do not leave any opening for the devil. The Prophet was not referring to the devil, which you see in the Onida TV ad. You know the Onida TV ad? The devil with the two horns and a tail? The Prophet was not referring to that devil. He was referring to the devil of racism, of caste, of color, of wealth, irrespective whether you're rich or poor, whether you're king or pauper. When you stand for prayers, when you stand for Salah, stand shoulder to shoulder. So that the brotherhood increases. The devil of racism, of caste, of color, of creed, of wealth, does not come in between you. And the best example of international brotherhood is in the pilgrimage of Islam, that is during Hajj. About two and a half million people from various parts of the world, they come to Makkah to perform Hajj. People from various parts of the world, from America, from Canada, from UK, from Singapore, from Malaysia, from India, from Pakistan, from Indonesia, from various parts of the world they come, and the men, they're dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth, that preferably white. You cannot identify that the person standing next to you, whether he's a king or a pauper. It's the best example of international brotherhood. It's the biggest annual gathering of the world. Two and a half million people gather every year. And the person standing next to you, you cannot make out whether he's a king or a pauper, irrespective whether you're rich or poor, black or white, from whichever part of the world you're coming, you're dressed in the same attire. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, in the speech of his farewell pilgrimage, he said that there is only one God, and no Arab is superior to a non-Arab, nor is a non-Arab superior to an Arab. A white is not superior to a black, nor a black over the white. The only criteria for superiority is taqwa, its righteousness, its piety, its God consciousness. Irrespective of whichever race you belong to, whichever color you have, that doesn't make you superior. In the sight of Allah, all are equal. Only if you're more pious, more God conscious, more righteous, can you be superior to the other human being? And when the Hajj is performed, every person he recites, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik La Sharika Laka Labbaik, Inna Alhamda, Wal Niyamata, Laka Wal Mulk, La Sharika Laka. They keep on repeating, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik La Sharika Laka Labbaik. Even when he comes back from Hajj, that always remains in his mind, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, which means, here I am. Oh my Lord, here I am. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, here I am. You have no partners, here I am. Inna alhamda wal niyamata. All praises are due to you. All bounties are yours. Laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. To you belong the whole dominion, the whole universe and you have no partners. It is ingrained in his mind that labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, here I am, oh my Lord, here I am.
Islam is still spreading because it is not the religion of paper. Islam is a way of life. Words of warning. On the day of judgment, every human being is vulnerable to be touched by hellfire. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. Mamdu Muhammad. We should remember what have we prepared for the day of judgment. Words of warning in reminders tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. UK and 6.30 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr.